The Toronto Raptors have officially waived Sasha Vizenkov. So what are the details behind this buyout and what does it mean for the Raptors and particularly their cap space? Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. This is Amateur Sports 2, the second channel in the Amateur Hour Production Network, where we go through additional Toronto Raptors content and videos just like this. Subscribe for more, drop a like if you enjoy, and check out our main channel if you have not done so already. So, we learned yesterday that the Raptors have finally ended the saga with Sasha Vizenkov and have waived the player. They've bought him out, and he's now free to go back to Europe where he's expected. I mean, there's already reports that he had signed previously with Olympiacos, even though he was still under contract with the Raptors. And there's an agreement between FIBA and the NBA that protects both leagues from players doing this, leaving their current situation while they are under contract in a different continent to go play in the other one overseas. So Sasha Vizenkov can't just leave his NBA contract and sign with Olympiacos. FIBA would not allow that to happen, and vice versa. The NBA would not allow Vizenkov, if he was under contract in Europe, to just sign for an NBA team. So when the Sacramento Kings signed Vizenkov a year ago now, they had to wait until he was a free agent in Europe before they would have the opportunity to do so. So that's why this situation became a little bit sticky. Vizenkov did not exactly enjoy his time playing in the NBA. He was a superstar in the EuroLeague, was the reigning EuroLeague MVP when he decided to take his talents across the seas over to play with the Sacramento Kings. Things did not work out very well. He wanted to return to Europe, but the thing was, the Sacramento Kings gave him a three-year contract, a two-year contract with a team option in the third year. So he was still under contract, and the Sacramento Kings decided that if they wanted to cut this salary, focus on signing DeMar DeRozan in the offseason, so they salary dumped him in the Jalen McDaniels trade to the Toronto Raptors. But the big news that came out of this buyout here was a tricky situation. But the big news that came out of this situation was the price associated with the buyout. Because Vizenkov had a little bit of leverage in this situation, surprisingly. Yes, he wanted to return to Greece. He wanted to play for Olympiacos. However, as I said, he couldn't just go, and the Raptors were not just going to buy him out to allow him to go. After all, his contract for this season, what would have been his contract with the Raptors, was about $6.6 million. Here we have the $6.6 million per year that he was making. The Raptors didn't exactly want to just buy that out and continue to have that salary count towards the cap and continue to have that salary count towards the luxury tax. So there needed to be some sort of agreement in place. You'd think, well, how does Vizenkov have any leverage? If he wants to go, then he should just allow for a $0 buyout. Well, that's also not really how things work here, because in past situations, the leverage that the player would have in the circumstance would be that they can threaten with retirement. Retirement is a loose term. Essentially, they could take a year off from the NBA, that would still have the full $6.6 .6 million count towards a cap in luxury tax. Though the Raptors would not have to pay it, it would still count towards the cap situation and the tax situation, which is a big deal for the Raptors who want to add on to their current roster. Vizenkov could take a year off, and then he'd be free to sign wherever, and then he could sign for Olympiacos. Obviously, that's not an ideal situation for Sasha Vizenkov himself. That's not an ideal situation for the Raptors. So, in a sort of meet-in-the-middle sort of agreement, I was expecting the Raptors to come to terms with an agreement in a buyout in the range of 2 to $3 million. Just say, okay, we'll pay half, you get to go, we save a little bit towards our salary cap, we can both go away pretty, with, pretty happy without how things petered out. But the Raptors... Well, the thing about the Raptors right now is that they're not in a very good situation as a roster. This team is not exactly going to be extremely competitive for the upcoming season. So their leverage in the negotiation was, well, <laughs> we'll just eat the contract, man. We want you to play here. We think you're a great player. If you don't want to play here, look, we're not just going to let you go. We're not going to pay you to play some somewhere else. We can fully just sit on this contract for a year and then not take your team option next season. So, you know, the ball is in your court, whatever you want to do. So in a rather surprising situation, not only did the Toronto Raptors wave Sasha Vizenkov, the humongous news that comes out of this situation is that Sasha Vizenkov is not getting paid a dime, not a single dime by the Toronto Raptors to go play somewhere else. It was a $0 buyout. Vizenkov really wanted to go play in Olympiacos. The Raptors said, if you really want to go play, you're not getting paid a single cent from us. This is astonishing news. This just never happens. 
people were confused when I continued to say, look, Vizenkov has some leverage. Like, there still is some leverage here. He does have an opportunity to get some money out of this. I understand how that can be confusing, but now I just looks, it looks, it looks bad because he took zero dollars here. This is not a typical move for a player to make trying to go play in FIBA compared to the NBA. So the Raptors front office have done a fantastic job in getting to this point. They stayed patient and got it done. That Sacramento Kings trade looks even better at this point, but what are the salary implications that this gives to the team? Because not only have the Raptors waived Sasha Vizenkov, they've actually also waived Javon Freeman Liberty. Javon Freeman Liberty, this is more of a tricky situation because Freeman Liberty signed a contract in the middle of last season, which was a multi-year extension, a multi-year extension. Yes, it is a multi-year extension in by definition because it's for more than one year. However, it's a guaranteed contract to the end of the season, which was last season, and then it's a very slightly partial guarantee for the upcoming season. So Javon Freeman Liberty was guaranteed $100,000 for the upcoming season, and there was about $1.7 million of non-guaranteed money that he would have been given guaranteed if he had made the roster. So not only would Javon Freeman Liberty have had to play well enough to make the Raptors roster, he would have had to have played well enough to make the Raptors roster and justify the Raptors paying him $1.8 million over giving somebody else a likely much cheaper contract. So in the end, Freeman Liberty, I don't think anybody really ever expected him to pull that off. The Raptors waited through Summer League, gave him the platform to play and showcase his talent there. But ultimately, I think what we learned from Summer League is that Freeman Liberty is an NBA caliber player but he's not $1.8 million guaranteed caliber. He's definitely good enough to earn a two-way spot somewhere else, and I wish him all the best. But that does open up more cap space for the Raptors on top of the Sasha Vizenkov money. So what is the cap situation right now for the Raptors? Well, the 6.6 plus the 1.8 on top of the 2 to $3 million that the Raptors already had. Right now, the cap space situation for the Raptors is they're looking at about $11 million in space before the tax to make a deal. This is great news. This $11 million gives you a good degree of flexibility. It opens up most of the mid-level exception. And if you shed salary elsewhere, you might be able to open up the full mid-level, which is pretty enticing to some potential free agent candidates. But well, I'm recording. It's July 23rd. Um, the free agent pool has dried up. If you are good enough to earn yourself a mid-level exception sort of contract, well, you're probably on a team already. So that's not really in the question at the moment for the Raptors because there's just not really a player worthy of giving that contract to. The only player out there is likely Tyus Jones, who is still a free agent, who you give that mid-level exception contract to. He helps you out the gate, and he becomes a good trade chip down the line. But what's more likely going to be in play for the Raptors here is they're just going to save that. They're going to bank that $11 million dollars And as they look to execute a trade throughout the season, particularly with guys like, well, more particularly Bruce Brown, but also a little bit Chris Boucher, the Raptors now have $11 million extra in cap space to take on salary to make that trade happen. The reason Bruce Brown and to a lesser degree Chris Boucher are still on this team at the moment is the Raptors have been able to facilitate a trade that makes sense. It's difficult right now. $20 million is no longer the tradable contract that it used to be. An NBA that's turning more towards either you're getting, you know, 30 million plus towards the max or you're getting less than $10 million as a complimentary player. There's no more of this, uh, I was going to say, I would call out the mid-level amount of contract. It's not the mid-level. The mid-level exception is like $12.5 million. But this middle ranking and sort of contract, $20 million, it's just become a lot harder to trade. Just ask the Chicago Bulls with Nikola Vucevic. But this makes it a lot easier to trade Bruce Brown down the line. So, you know, with not a great pool of players available to pick up, I don't think the Raptors are going to be ultra competitive this season. I hate to say it. I want them to be, but I just don't think they will be. Yeah, that, that cap space is a whole lot more valuable in a potential trade down the line to maybe add on some better picks, a better pick to any sort of Bruce Brown trade that materializes. But this is amazing work by the front office, not only the trade with the Kings, but man, to not pay Vizenkov a single dollar. Like, this gets you really close to that mid-level exception, opens up all that cap space. In the end, waving Javon Freeman Liberty was the necessary thing for the Raptors to take on. 
there's a lot more flexibility now. You know, they've continued to work on flexibility. The front office over the last, you know, few years have dug themselves in a pretty deep hole. But these little moves like this are slowly starting to climb us out of it. And hopefully we look down the line at the trade that does materialize and think, man, if it wasn't for that decision with Vizenkov and the Raptors playing hardball, maybe this wouldn't have happened. It could really set us up a lot nicer for the future. So what do you make of this whole situation? Give me your thoughts and opinions and comments down below. But if you did get anything entertaining or informative out of the video, please drop a like. Make sure you check out my other channels, my main channel, Amateur Sports, for more Raptors content with over 17,000 subscribers. Check out my Reactions channel, the best stream clips and highlights from the streams from, hey, this channel over here. Subscribe to the channel that you are currently watching. Here's another video that you might enjoy. Happy to be back over here on the second channel. We'll see you again next time for another video here on Amateur Sports 2.